It is a night for new beginnings, lit by dreams on the Olympic stage, new visions for our waterfront at home, second chances after a near death. It was kind of unbelievable. Baby steps into a wide new world, a blaze of glory on a special night. Live, local, from WPTV, this is News Channel 5 at 11. Local coverage you can count on. Good evening and welcome to our new on-air home here at News Channel 5. It is a brand new look. Bringing you the best in local coverage. And we begin with Chief Meteorologist Steve Weagle. Steve? Another hot day across South Florida. Sunshine, heat and humidity. Temperatures cooling off just a little tonight. We're dropping down into the high 70s and low 80s across the entire area. There's a look outside tonight. Beautiful. Here are the highlights as we go through the next couple of days. Very warm night. More heat, more humidity right into Saturday and Sunday. Day. And looking at some weekend rain, we saw some today, some massive storms popping up around Belle Glade, Pahokee, and back around Okeechobee. Will we see more in the weekend forecast? It's coming up in just a few minutes. It was kind of, it was kind of unbelievable because of what it, what it was about. Um, I didn't, I never thought I would get shot about a female. The buddy was three times, and he survived tonight. He's sharing his story only with News Channel 5. Our Angela Cruz covering Indian River County at the jail where the suspects are locked up. Robert Smith and Dominique Helms are behind bars here at the Indian River County Jail. According to these reports, they're facing multiple charges after authorities say they shot to kill. Avery Lee says he vividly remembers the pain of being shot and having his arm shattered from a pistol beating. Burning from being shot, but I, there wasn't any like just I mean, I, uh, my arm was broke on the inside, so, I mean, I felt that, but just the initial burning of being hit so many times. Deputies say Lee was shot in both arms and also was hit in the head from a ricocheting bullet on July 7th when three suspects attacked him at a Gifford store. Lee admits he was involved with one of the suspect's girlfriends, but says he couldn't believe they pulled guns. And even after I was hit, I still wasn't, I was still in more shock about the initial event like while we were even fighting like I don't believe this guy is trying to fight me about this chick. Indian River County Sheriff Daryl Lore says authorities have been searching for the two suspects that wielded guns. Both Dominique Helms and Robert Smith were arrested Thursday. One was hiding out in a hotel room and the other was in South County of Indian River County. One, one went through here came out right there. Lee says he was angry at first but now he only feels pity for his attackers. He says he hopes others learn from this. There's no coming back from guns. When you, when you pull a firearm, it's, it's life or death. There's no, no coming back from that. Lee says he considers himself blessed because he's had friends who have died after just one gunshot. Smith and Helms had their first appearance in court this morning, and the sheriff says they could be looking at life sentences. In Indian River County, Angela Cruz, WPTV News Channel 5. New information we just learned late tonight. A judge denied a motion to issue a temporary injunction against three Martin County school board members accused of violating the sun state sunshine law. According to our news partners at the Scripps Treasure Coast newspapers, a Sarasota-based nonprofit group filed a lawsuit claiming chairwoman Sue Hershey and members Lori Gaylord and David Anderson violated the sunshine law by making an unannounced visit in May to the Stewart Adult Community High School. Tonight, a Wellington Middle school principal remains in jail. Accused of multiple sex charges after police say he tried to meet with who he thought was a 15-year-old boy for sex. News Channel 5's Jeff Skrypek has been tracking this story all day for us and he joins us live from the Palm Beach County Jail. Jeff? Well, Michael and Kelly, we continue to stand by, wait to speak with this man, 47-year-old Scott Blank. He's the principal of Polo Park Middle School. At any moment, he could be coming walking out here of the Palm Beach County Jail after he posts his set $500,000 bond. This after police say he allegedly tried to meet up and have sex with who he thought was a 15-year-old boy. Wellington Polo Park Middle School principal Scott Blake in cuffs and in a jail jumpsuit facing a judge as a result of being arrested for allegedly trying to have sex with a 15-year-old boy. Blake faces two separate child sex charges, one charge of computer pornography, child exploitation, and one charge of traveling to meet a minor to commit an unlawful sex act. It's scary knowing he was there last year and things could have happened with the kids and sometimes the kids aren't going to talk. Tasha Boston, whose son attends Polo Park Middle School, is stunned to hear what police accuse her son's principal of doing. According to a probable cause affidavit, police say Blank was communicating with who he thought was a 15-year-old boy for several days. 
Blake allegedly sent texts, pictures of himself, and suggestive messages expressing he wanted to meet with who he thought was a teen at a Boynton Beach parking lot. That teen, though, was allegedly an undercover Boynton Beach police officer. And when Blake arrived, Boynton Beach police say they moved in to arrest. The problem with internet predators are they can be anyone and anywhere at any time. And this just shows you that. On his LinkedIn profile page, Blake lists his position with the district and that he was an assistant principal at Jupiter High. He also recently tweeted, quote, thankful to retain our A grade. The district won't speak on camera. Superintendent Wayne Jen releasing this statement instead. Quote, while we cannot comment on ongoing investigations, these allegations are very troubling and disappointing to us. The safety of our children is our paramount concern. I think he should be just leave, leave altogether. But according to the school district, that's not happening. The district is reassigning Blank to non-student contact status pending the outcome of the trial. Now, if and when Blake posts bail here at the Palm Beach County Jail, a judge has ordered him to house arrest and no connection with any minors and no connection to the Internet. We spoke with his lawyer earlier today who was representing him at his first appearance, and he told us by phone he is no longer representing Blake. Reporting live in suburban West Palm Beach, Jeff Skrypek, WPTV News Channel 5. Democracy 2012 now with yet another indicator of how important Florida is in the race for the White House. Former New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani stumping for votes across our sunshine state for presumptive GOP nominee Mitt Romney. In a one-on-one -on -one interview with our Alex Sands, Giuliani talked about the economy and President Obama. There's a reason why we've had 41 months of 8% unemployment, which is just about a record for this country since the Depression. It's because Barack Obama's policies, Barack Obama's ideology kills jobs. Barack Obama would have said to the American people, are you better off now than you were four years ago? They throw him out of office in a heartbeat. The former mayor also hit the campaign money trail at a private fundraiser in Boca Raton. Now, President Obama is returning to Florida next week. The White House announced a campaign stop in Orlando on Thursday, where President Obama will talk about rebuilding the economy and count on News Channel 5 and WPTV.com to cover the trip to the Sunshine State. The wife of Trayvon Martin's shooter has entered a written plea of not guilty tonight on a perjury charge. Shelley Zimmerman will be arraigned Tuesday in Central Florida after a judge says she lied about her and her husband George Zimmerman's finances during a bond hearing. Shelley Zimmerman was arrested and released on bond last month. George Zimmerman has pleaded not guilty to second-degree murder in Martin's death. And tonight, the parents of George Zimmerman have started their own website asking for money. This just one week after Zimmerman relaunched his site. Zimmerman's parents' website details their son's life and struggles since the shooting. On the site, robertandgladys.com, the family attributes the need for money to health issues and the need to relocate after their address became public. Gun sales across Florida are spiking in the wake of the Colorado movie theater massacre. The Florida Department of Law Enforcement reports nearly 2,400 concealed weapons background checks run on the Friday after the massacre. That's up 14% from the week before. And Florida tops the nation with an estimated 950,000 active concealed weapons permits. Stories, lies, and videotape. You have to look at a 22-year-old in Miami claims he was attacked by a group of men in a robbery attempt, but look for yourself. Police say surveillance video proves he was injured when he fell off his skateboard. The tape shows him doing tricks before crashing into a concrete wall and fracturing his skull. It's unclear whether he'll face charges for lying to police. A brand new addition is coming to the West Palm Beach waterfront. Three man-made islands. They're nearly ready for use in the middle of the intracoastal. News Channel 5's Dan Corcoran live now with your very first look at the transformation. Dan. Well, Kelly, right now this whole area is completely locked up, fenced off, not yet open to the public. But if you take a look at this rendering here, this is what this project will look like when all is said and done. Right now, though, perhaps the best view is from above. A bird's eye view of an underwater transformation. Finishing touches going into the South Cove natural area along West Palm Beach's waterfront. Great location to capture all generations. Eric Anderson is project manager. That's going to be a mangrove planter. First designed and later dropped by the city of West Palm Beach, the creation of these three man-made intracoastal islands has been funded and now nearly completed by Palm Beach County. 
The islands in a 556-foot elevated boardwalk are almost ready for use. So at high tide, these islands are underwater, uh, anywhere between a half foot and, and a foot underwater. At low tide, foot and a half above water. Mangroves and other water vegetation will be planted here, which Anderson says will attract fish, birds, and sea turtles. The people behind this plan and local business owners say this really could tie the waterfront to the water itself. This waterway is key for people like Larry Post. Completely water repellent. Post is owner of Native Outfitters. The project is actually prompting him to expand his business. And soon he'll be renting paddle boards for use alongside these new islands. And it's going to connect the waterfront physically to Daytona Street, Clamata Street, and the surrounding businesses. A living classroom, says Anderson. So you have a habitat right in the middle of the city here. Correct. The county, along with Florida Inland Navigation District and the Lake Worth Lagoon Partnership Program, covered costs for this $3.5 million project. High tide lifts all boats. The payoff on land and in the water may be coming soon. And though there had been opposition to this project over the years, it should be completed within just a few weeks. And in August, volunteers will actually be out here planting the, those mangroves right around these islands, right in the middle of the Intracoastal. Reporting live in downtown West Palm Beach tonight, I'm Dan Corcoran, WPTV News Channel 5. In our sparkling new home, it is a big <laughs> night for us here at News Channel 5 and also for our Olympic athletes. Yep. Still ahead, why Olympic watchers say tonight's opening ceremony was not necessarily a sparkling performance. Another major recall following a Contact 5 investigation. What car maker says its SUV needs improvement?